In the previous video, we have implemented visualization using our prefabs. Now we need to upgrade it so the path looks like a path and not like a bunch of placed road sprites. So what we are going to tackle first is to rotate our start and end position and next we are going to tackle how to place corners on our road. So let's get to it. Let's stop the game and we need to open up our map visualizer. Okay, we are now in our map visualizer class. Let's slide down to where we are using uh, visualize using prefabs. Uh, so here in the second loop, what we will want to do after we place our obstacle on our map, we will want to create a two temporary variables direction previous direction equals direction dot none and direction next direction equals direction dot none. So we will use those two parameters to find out what is the previous and the next direction of the cells uh, of our road and basically set accordingly to this our rotation for different parts of the road. So first of all we will start with rotating our start and end position. So let's slide down where we have a start position Okay, and what we need to check if data.path.count is greater than zero. Okay, so if it is, we will call next direction equals get direction, and we do not have this method yet from vectors, and we will pass our data path of index zero. So this will retrieve to us the first point on our path, which is the next point from our start position and our position because we are currently placing the start object because our cell type is of type start. So we need to create this method. Let's alt enter and generate this method and let's slide it down. Let's rename the vector three to be position to go. To go to and vector 3 position okay great instead of throwing the exception we are going to check if position to go to dot x is greater than position dot x we will return because we know those are the neighbors so either x or z value differs here so return if this is x is to the right we will return direction dot right and else if our position to go to x is less than position dot x we know that the next position is to the left so return direction dot left else if our position to go to dot z is less than position dot z we know that we have next position uh, down so let's return direction down and in other case we are we are sure that we have the next tile uh, up above our current cell so we will return direction dot up great let's slide up back to our start let me show you in Unity how our sprite for the straight road looks like. So let's drag here the tile straight. And we can see that Z value is in front of us. So if the path is up or down, this is perfect. But if it goes left or right, we need to rotate it by 90 degrees on the... Let's see which axis. I think the Y axis. Yep. So we need to rotate 90 degrees on Y axis. So let's delete it. Let's go back to code. So what we are going to check here, if our next direction is equal to direction dot right, or our next direction is equal to direction dot left, we are going to create indicator. So let's copy this code. Let's cut it and let's paste it here. And we are going to pass our custom rotation as we have prepared it quaternion dot euler we're going to pass 0 90 0 
So this will automatically rotate our uh, prefab to the to be meeting a uh, left and right side. Great. And else, and actually we do not need to put it inside our data.path that count that is greater than zero because we have preset it to be none. So if it is none, we are going to place it but without the rotation. So by default it will be rotated up and down. Great. And we need to do a similar thing for our exit position. So if our data dot path dot count is greater than zero, and now we will call previous direction equals get direction. But now we need to create a new method called of previous cell. We are going to pass the position and the data. And let's generate this method. Control Alt, uh, oh, sorry, Alt Enter and generate this method. Great, let's go where it was created. And here, what we need to do is to calculate the index. So var index equals data.path.find uh, index. Uh, again, using link library. So let's call a equals uh, such as a equals position. So we are looking for the position on our path uh, list because we know that the exit position is on our path. Here we are going to find our previous cell position equals data. Uh, sorry, vector 3.0 and we need to call if index uh, so our index of our exit position is greater than 0 so this is not the last uh, position this is not the first position on our path list we're going to search for previous uh, cell position equals data dot path dot uh, of index minus one because we know there is a position that is uh, less uh, of smaller index than our index of the end position and else we are going to set previous cell position to be data dot start position now this condition will never appear with our implementation but better to implement it than to return an error so we are going to return our get direction from vectors and we are going to set previous uh, cell as the first one and position as the second one and as you can see this the previous one uh, the previous cell position is paced as the position to go to so it is like we were moving from the end position towards the path okay so we have this and let's go back up to the switch statement and now we have to have a couple of checks so if our previous direction actually we can create a switch statement previous direction and we can have either left down or right cases because it is by definition it's set up so no none right left and down great and case right we are going to create uh, copy this create indicator control c actually we can cut it out and on default we can create it by default like this and when right we can create it by a rotated quaternion dot euler and as you, can, as you might recall it is rotated up by def uh, by default so by rotating it 90 degrees we can rotate it to the right left as 180 and down will be minus 90. so let's set 0 90 0 okay let's copy this to rotate it left we will need to rotate it by minus 90 degrees and to rotate it down we will have to rotate it 180 degrees and that's basically it for our and that's basically it but this introduces a bug where if the path.count is less or equal to zero, 
we are not going to place anything at the point of exit point. So let's cut out this switch statement and paste it below the if statement. So now we are going to create the indicator with the basic rotation. Okay, that's great. Let's return to Unity. Okay, wait for the code to compile. Now let's choose the map generator. Make sure that it is set to visualize using prefabs and auto repair. And let's press play. So let's see how it went. Let's go to scene view and we can see that our exit position is actually rotated towards the road as well as our start position. Let's zoom out and let's create the map and we can see that it is rotated fairly good. Let's now change the direction from left to up and from exit to down maybe. Generate it and again we can see that it rotates correctly. And uh, again, the path can change, so now we can see it. And yes, indeed, our exit position is rotated correctly and road is rotated correctly. So I am fairly confident that our algorithm does its jobs well. So the last step will be to rotate our road and place corners where there need to be corner. So that is what we are going to tackle in the next video.